Okay. I think you're, I think you're losing it, Mr. Medina. <laughs> no, I'm not losing it. Not at all, man. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I might be four or five minutes late sometimes, but no. Okay, so we got uh, lights, camera, action. Good. But let, we should let, allow people to come in first. All right, I'll uh, I'll share it through. Okie dokie. I have a normal routine, and it was rushed this morning. <laughs> I know. It happens. The best laid plans of mice and men and Todd. Sometimes. That's right, man. That's right. And this method's been working, so can't complain yeah, yeah. about it. Yeah. All right, let me see. Let's go to this one. It's the uh, the linear brain. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. 14 people here in the house so far. Hey, Monique. All right. Let me share it through the network. Shout out to Ignite Your Light, Rising Above, the event is happening, 13 Dimensions of Consciousness, Circle of Life, Anna Maria Garcia, Spiritual Healers, 11-11 Movement, Sun Will Rise in the West, 5D High Vibe Tribe, New Earth Ascendant Soul, Twin Flame Healing Network, Galactic Federation of Light and Fused Lights, Lightworkers Unification, The Return of the Soul, and... 5D Soul Tribe, Spiritual Wonderland, Gardeners, oh, Guardians of Oneness. If these shows resonate, please share so we can stay above the algorithms at Facebook. And thank you for your continued love and support and contributions to help us keep doing what we're doing by the seat of our pants. Hello, uh, Shanine. Oh, oh no! Oh yeah, Shanine Van Rion's here. If you guys haven't checked out the Freedom Network, uh, you need to. You need to. Um, I saw last night she's having three shows today. I think today or tomorrow. That's excellent. God bless you. <laughs> That's a lot of downloads in the day. Yeah. She is a live wire, as they say. <clears throat> yes, yeah, she is. Here, let me read this. Uh, let me pull something up to start the show. Everybody knows who's sitting across from us. All right, we got uh, Pamela Johnson here. She's a big supporter, big supporter of uh, many, uh, of everybody, really. All right, let's try this. Let's see here. Hang on one second. We're going to pull something up here and start the show a little differently. All right. Okay, so, so here we go. Back here, let's see. Yeah, I am uh, a little bit slow here, 3D brains. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, so this is uh, a little um, piece of a note. Hello, Duncan Alexander, I'm sorry about last time and look forward to seeing you soon. I saw you on the schedule. So Dr. Joe sent me a note uh, with a really scary picture. We're going to take a look at it in a minute. <clears throat> and I'm going to read you because he's, he's uh, transparent, which is, which is what it's all about. So I don't even have to ask him. He's my brother. I know he wouldn't mind me reading this part of uh, the message. Not he says, uh, yeah, he says, uh, We'll be describing how we can maybe get through the dark night of the soul by getting in touch with the dark light of the soul. Really deep shift. And I know you know what I mean. I will talk about Black Dragon Kung F.U. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's an acronym or means foo. And yeah, F.U. Yeah, there's your answer to the question. So Black Dragon Kung, fuck you. Okay, so... Haha, ha. I too feel like I'm waiting. The deep shift at the moment, it really stinks. In fact, the most difficult time since I gave up drinking 27 years ago. This is the picture. 
this is the picture of uh, Dr. Joe's Dragon Energy. We had a show, last show of the day yesterday, with Hung Nguyen, who is actually raised in the dragon culture. He's Vietnamese. Very interesting. And there's no coincidences. So we're going to learn about uh, what's going on with Dr. Joe and his dragon. And uh, so we will be hanging out here talking for the next hour, hour and 20 minutes or so. So Dr. Joe, oh, there's Hung Nguyen right now. We went from dragons talking with Hung to uh, beginning with dragons talking with Dr. Joe. So what's happening, Dr. Joe? You told me before the show that you don't know what the F is going on here. <laughs> I've got no idea. My, um, my thinking and my feeling fall very much in line with Vera Ingeborg's um, views that um, I don't think anybody knows at all, can predict at all from one breath to the next from one moment to the next, what's going on. Yeah. I think because I surrendered, as you know, 27 years ago, um, after years and years and years of being unable to stop drinking. I tried everything, cognitive behavioral therapies. I tried all sorts of physical exercises, you know, and the more I applied my willpower, the more ill I got. Yeah. Uh, and then I met a bunch of people who said, no, you've come to the stage in human development now where you need to completely let go of everything that you've believed, everything that you feel, every attitude you need to let go totally yeah. and surrender now to the next, the next level of your being. And Todd, I didn't have a clue what they were talking about. So, you know, I've told this story before and you're familiar with it. Some of your viewers mightn't be, but um, I should say some of our viewers. I was be. just about to correct you. And this is it. Yeah fucking telepathy man and it's been coming in more and more every day so thank you for yeah no that's uh, in fact I'm, I'm getting a, a big tingling going up my spine now because you know I, I do believe that we're merging we're like little cells whose membranes are just touching yeah. and merging into a bigger bigger force field now and a bigger force for good you know but when I surrendered you know when I let go and that was at the last minute when I you know I took a whole load of tablets and I tried to do myself in and something happened to me where I completely let go and I felt this peace like I'd never felt before. And in that same peacefulness, I understood exactly how the universe worked. I understood everything. I was in contact with everything, everything from rocks and plants and trees and animals and everything, right, was connected, you know, and I got that feeling, the peace that passeth all understanding. Yeah. And it changed my mind, you know, and I don't believe now that I'm changing my mind, my ego mind. I think that my, excuse me, I think that my ego mind is being changed for me. And what yeah. seems to be actually happening in everything that's not in alignment with my true essential nature, my soul self is being flushed away now. And for the last week, and seriously, Todd, you know, um, People look at me and they look for advice sometimes, you know, and I just have to say to them, I've got, I don't know what's going to happen in my own life in the next 24 hours. And I've certainly got no idea what's going to happen to yours, but I can give you a technique whereby if you go in, open your heart and get in touch with your soul and surrender to its guidance, you know, almost like a satellite navigation system. Yeah. Then more and more, the more you trust it, the stronger you'll get. And I've got to be honest, Todd, in the last week, two weeks, I've really, really found it difficult. Having said that, it's like all this shit is being moved outside of me. And there's been a part of me that's been quite calm in the middle of it all, you know. And that's that bit that's got faith. It's got trust. It doesn't fully understand. But there's a deep, deep sense, a very, very subtle sense that I'm still on the right path, you know. And I, I honestly don't believe, you know, sin, you know, um, sin from the Greek means to miss the mark. And yeah. I think it's just slightly out of vibration, that's all. And I think the technique that I help and I've learned myself off other people is, is to let go and to try and retune to that very, very silent, quiet vibration that's guiding us all through this. You know, I've even felt like, um, you know, the times where Moses was about and the Red Sea was parted and all this sort of there's been so many peculiar things happening. But at depth, Todd, at depth. I know that it's all meant to be. 
I yeah. know that I'm being looked after. I know that it's this force of unconditional love. Well, it's not really a force, actually. It's so subtle. It's more like a flow and a gentle guidance, you know. Yeah. You know, and other things that have been happening to me. I, I listened to a song, right, by Stella Furburn, you know, and, and she was on a few weeks back. And it transfixed me what she was saying, because all this stuff that she was talking about has been coming to me all of my life, even since I was a child. You know, I've had this picture in my mind of the Madonna you know, and I've not, I've not, didn't really understand what all this means, but now I understand it's called the um, the Magdalene vibration. You know, and what was happening is when when I listened to this um, song, it was a Cathar hymn, but it was sung it was sung by Stella, you know, and it was at 428 hertz. And when I was listening to it, it's almost like absolutely everything aligned, and I was transported back, you know, to ancient Egypt. And I got all this stuff about Osiris, you know, and Isis, and then uh, from Egypt, Imhotep, vibrational medicine, the 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 all this stuff, the Essenes, then the Gnostics, then the south of France, you know, the Cathars, all this stuff, Notre Dame came through, and I got, and then the black dragon reappeared because this black dragon has been with me for a long time, you know. <laughs> I thought. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. See, that that picture, when I was a child of seven years of age, I used to see something like that. And it was always waiting at the bottom of the stairs for me. And at seven years old, I would have dreams where I was tumbling and tumbling and tumbling down the stairs. And this black dragon was waiting for me at the bottom. Right. And because I've been brought up with a fear, you know, Roman Catholicism and, and all that sort of business, I've been brought up with fear from a very, very early age. So it could only be something evil as far as I was concerned, you know. But you know what, Todd, what's happened is it's become my best mate. It's become my friend. It's become my protector. Right. But yeah. so the energy of it's come up as well, because I feel now that I'm shielded by this great big black red-eyed, um, deeply base, deeply base, but in a positive sense, you know. And sometimes even the throat starts to change with really deep vibrations, you know. And I listen to the language of light, and I, I talk the language of light when that's coming through, sometimes when I'm running and stuff like that. But this one's like this. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, my Dr. God. Dr. Joe, uh, we've had many things happen in 1,100 episodes, but... Uh... Uh, that this might have just this might be the first one I'm gonna have to cut out early. No, that's that. This is a serious thing, but I mean that that was uh, you got to have a little humor. But that was very good. I mean, you could actually scare the living shit out of somebody doing that. <laughs> well, this is this is what the the point that's being made to me is Joe. You have to go into the belly of the beast because yeah. that's what you've been frightened of all your life. And it's not there to scare you. It's actually there to protect you. And there's other things. You know, if you look at Lisa Renee's site, the energetic synthesis, there's a lot of correspondences here between what she's talking about and what's actually happening to me in my life. But there's a thing where if the vibration's off, it can actually turn against you and start to destroy you. So it's very important that you do this in the correct way, you know. And there's a personal responsibility that goes with this. I'm beginning to see this now. There's a personal responsibility. And my view is, you know, above all, do no harm. So if this energy is coming in and there's any way, shape or form, it wants to fire this energy at somebody and harm them. It's not the correct path. That's where I'm on now, because this is the path of unconditional love, which is a freeing energy. And what it's doing is as the shifts coming in, that's been coming in since 2012, 21st of December, when the tide changed, what actually happened is the great cleansing came about. You know, and that's what's actually happening. If people don't understand that what's being released is not of self, big self I'm talking about. And basically it's the ego being disconnected from all the bondage and the chains of the past, then they'll be taken away with it. So I sort of see my job is to explain to people how to reconnect deeply with their heart and soul and how to recognize when they've emotionally engaged with something that's seemingly negative and how to release themselves from that. I don't know yeah. whether that makes sense at all. 
Yeah, it does. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I agree with Vera too. Obviously, you know, Vera comes on a couple times a month. We've been doing shows for two years. Um, she's uh, got an organic uh, kind of uh, delivery and connection, which is, which is, you know, sans archangels, you know, without archangels, angels, galactics, elementals, it's just a, it's a beautiful, uh, it's a, bu a beautiful transmission, consistent transmission that she puts out. So I agree with uh, both of you, you know, nobody knows anything. <laughs> the more they say they know something, the more they say you need to do this or it's, it's this is what's going on, the less I listen to them, whether they're on this show or not. Yeah. Uh, I believe everybody's included and every voice is relevant and every experience is relevant. The other thing I don't care for, and I don't mind saying, is this, this, uh, insignificant a philosophy of insignificance of the life experience itself that's why i have a little bit of an issue with some far eastern philosophies and religion uh and i'm not saying i'm right i'm just saying there is a purpose to our existence and if that purpose is nothing more and nothing less than finding out that we are that uh well we were that before we came in the only difference between before we came in and when we leave is what we do while we're here and to me that is our offering of gratitude uh, to the universe. That is our contribution to the universe. It is by the, not in the human definition of the linear ex, uh, explanation uh, of what people might call the human condition, but actually the asset, the invaluable asset to the universe of what we do at our present point of awareness in each and every moment. So that means whatever the fuck happened five minutes ago <laughs> doesn't mean anything. The only thing it's the only thing that that uh, it serves us is what what happened, uh, what did we do, uh, what did we not do, or, or you know the lesson or whatever you want to call it. But that's an instantaneous, an instantaneous data point. You know that we don't even have to get into cognitive thinking. All we got to do is is keep on going because our body, mind, soul knows everything that we just experienced. And of course, everything we came into this thing with. So now third point is, is the, the black dragon. And we had a great discussion with Hung yesterday on dragons, great explanations. I, I actually started remembering uh, the dragon experiences that I had here in October and November and a little bit after that uh that is a that is a very powerful energy it is our protector but it is us you know but it's also got that that what you're describing so well that intense cali i love you but i'm going to come in here and rip your fucking heart out until you see how beautiful you actually are and how powerful you are yeah. the last the last thing i conclude with is i i had mentioned to i had asked or mentioned to hung nguyen yesterday uh, how do you, how do you, your dragons, I didn't say it this way, but how do your dragons serve you? How do you utilize your dragons? And she says, I don't, I serve them. Yeah. And I was like, oh, do you want to expand on that? Yeah, yeah. I think once I surrendered, I surrendered my ego, which is my body, mind complex, the human side of me. And then every morning I just surrendered again as a sort of a ritual to say, Whatever's on the cards for us today, use me in any way possible that will benefit me, my wife, the cat, and mankind. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to try and work this out, you know. I said, but I'm just going to go now with the feelings that emanate from me and try to be guided from those feelings. Because to me, what I've done all my life is, you know, with a, with a sort of powerful intellect, I've been able to generate thinking that generates thoughts that motivated me and that was all ego driven yeah. and that's what I've had to give up I've, you know I've said this many times before I had to metaphorically decapitate myself and then just trust that I would be guided by this energy that I feel and many of us feel and sometimes when I don't know what to do I just stop open my heart 
breathe in a very, very gentle way and just ask with my left ear, I sort of tune into my heart and say, I don't know what to do here. Will you please guide me in the correct way, please? Now, yeah. I don't know whether that's right or wrong, Todd, but it's all right for me. It's what I do. And in the last 27 years, it's prevented me from drinking again. My whole life has been turned upside down in a positive way. I've traveled all over the world. I've got a PhD in this and, you know, all these things that people... People think I'm like a living legend of recovery and stuff. I don't feel like that, right? I just feel like myself, you know, and I'm, you know, and sometimes I say things and I share honestly from my heart and people jump in and say, oh, you mustn't say that. You should say this. Try and say it this way. And basically they can go and F off, you know, because I tried that. I tried to talk in a very posh way, a bit like yourself, you know, and um, <laughs> I tried to do all that and every time I tried to something that wasn't tried to change something that wasn't essentially me it obstructed the expression of my essence coming through you know and that's what I think the Essenes are about essentially it was all about freedom to be who you are yeah. what you were born to be to stay at your specific soul's vibration because that's your specific gift yeah. Right. And so basically allow yourself to be reconnected with your soul's tribe, you know, and to start working together. And I honestly don't believe that we don't need to be in physical proximity to work together because yeah. we're all working together in spirit anyway. You know, and so at nighttime, I've been having the most phenomenal dreams, really. L last night or the night before, I woke up and my wife and I were in this dream and we were like the Lilliputians, you know, the little people from the <laughs> land of Lilliput. And yeah. we were looking up. This is no shit, mate. Honestly, it was... I believe you. There was like a military band going past and they came past our house, right? But when we looked up, they were about 50 feet tall. There was horses coming past and you could smell all the horse shit and everything, you know, hear the bands playing and everything. And I, I woke up and I thought, get me back there. That was really good, that, you know, but it was gone then, you know. And, yeah. But, these dreams are so they're so vivid and i don't even go into trying and interpreting stuff now you know this yeah. dream means this this dream means that this this dreams mean you're going to die tomorrow and if you don't it, you know todd it's too complicated to it try is. and work out so i just say if there's anything really that i need to see and understand intellectually just give us the words and the pictures please you know and, yeah. and that's what i do now and honestly mate I feel so strong on the inside, but this week I've 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 really found I felt like I've been in the middle of a vortex. Hello, darling. Uh, somebody said hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's... Yeah, I've I've been in this sort of vortex with all this stuff going on around me, and everybody outside of myself has been absolutely crazy. It's been so weird where we've been giving instructions to people yeah. and it's just, <laughs> it's just so you're speaking in a foreign language, you know, where have you gone? Have, is, am I that powerful? I've made you disappear. That's good that, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying, Todd. It's been hard and I've had to, I was given a set of tools, you know, um, and the people who explained it to me is here are the tools and there's a, there's a tool in there to fit any nut, you know, so yeah. you can, Whatever, whatever condition you're in, you can pick a specific tool. And this I am approach that I've developed, it's got four quadrants. There's, there's, there's instructions to look after your physical body. There's emotional instructions. There's intellectual instructions. And then it's all about spirituality. And the first one you go into is not the physical. You go into the spiritual to be guided to what to do next. You know, So physical things are easy. You know, Drink plenty of water, um, as pure as you can. Yeah. Right. Do as much brisk exercise as you can, at least five times 30 minute sessions of brisk aerobic exercise, you know, just to get your, your system going, you know, um, food wise, you know, try and eat as cleanly as possible. I still eat meat. I eat meat because my soul likes me to eat meat. And if one day it wakes up and says, we don't do meat anymore, Joe, then I'll go with that. I won't go with anything that anybody outside is telling me because I've been guilt tripped into changing my behavior all my life. And I won't anymore. I'll, yeah. I'll change when I am changed from within, when my soul changes me then, because sometimes spirit gets you to hang on to seemingly negative things in order to help other people to identify with where you're at, you know? So I can see all this now. 
you know so that's the physical side of things the other thing is stretching yoga is important i've mentioned that many times before keeping your hips open keeping your legs stretched and stuff like that so that's the physical side emotionally if you feel obstructed or blocked right it means to me anyway that the energy that flows through me normally freely has been stopped for some reason right it's generally something to do with my unconscious mind so i step back it's normally work to do i ask my heart what is it you're trying to show me oh right i need to go and apologize to that person because it was rude or i need to go and say yes because i said no right and, and you know yeah yeah you feel your way through guided by this energy so there's the emotional side you know so I don't believe in positive psychology either, you know, because to me, that's like a boot camp approach where you go, rah, rah, rah. Yes, you can. I feel happy. What a load of bollocks. You know, <laughs> I've tried all that positive psychology. It didn't work, but I gave it a go. It didn't work for me. And then spirituality wise is if I'm not being true to my essential self, to thine own self be true then I'll get obstructed again, you know? So it's it's almost like a revolving spiral of ascend. It's like the unicorn's horn, which goes out to infinity. And that's what I see a lot. It's almost like a spiral dynamic, Yeah. you know? And people say, well, you know, okay, but you're already enlightened. There's nothing to be done. I think in this 3D world, that's what Kung Fu is. Kung Fu is a discipline that needs effort. It needs focus. And the more you go through and overcome fear, the more strength you get, the more self-reliance on your essential self comes through, the stronger you feel, the more the energy builds you and all that sort of business. I, I know I'm going on again, mate, because once I get going, I can't stop. But uh, You're fine. Don't worry about it. No, you're yeah. good. And uh, well, and I think too, uh look we were we've been we obviously morgan and i obviously discuss pretty much discuss what's happening all the time based on our experience understanding that with some level of uh conscious awareness by anybody as the individual goes so goes the collective you know we're all kind of at some level kind of going through the same thing on a collective level it just doesn't always look that way. So what I'm trying to say is we were talking last night and to your point uh, at the end there, there's, there is a type of cyclical nature going on. We, we see that. We see that in the geometry of nature, of the cosmos, of our lives, of the seasons and such. So anyway, last night uh, I went and jumped in the shower and she, she started writing this piece. I'm going to read a little bit of it. Then I have a question for you says at first came levels of discontent now experiencing a period of a lull which always precedes the surge right so i think that's one thing that we can all kind of say you know what that's been happening forget about the sacred text forget about all that other stuff if we just look at the last few months or year and a half or two years there's been like this this cycle which is you know, it, you kind of go into this state of, of 3D, you know, the questions, the, the monkey mind, such, the, the feelings, and, and you go into this lull, and then there's this surge. There's a shift, you know. She went on to say the trick will be not to rush into human thoughts, concepts, and ideas, and allow for divinely timed flow. Yeah. The hum, human mind in overdrive, planning, creating, from that perspective, creates from a space of need and want and desire. Patience allows for a reset into the heart space where all knowing occurs, which is what you're really describing. Like, what can I do? You know, uh, turn off the mind and, and listen and, and communicate with your body, which is the universe. And the human will see that the true creative heart and solar creativity has actually already begun. Another point that, that aligns with what you're saying. The thinking, planning, organizing fucks it up. That's her, her quote. That's not me cursing. Uh, flow of love just flows into and with love. We are in a space of collaboration, et cetera, et cetera. Ready to play in oneness now. Now, uh, I, I really feel like that this is uh, what you're saying. You know, uh, all these other avenues, uh, you know, have been explored and dried up or come to their finite existence within our expanding awareness. Uh, but at beneath it all, 
beneath it all is is the other thing that that uh, you're saying, which is I am Dr. Joe, and Dr. Joe is going to do. Dr. Joe is going to honor himself. I am going to eat fucking hot dogs if I want to, and if it bothers somebody, that's not my problem. Okay. My problem is to hold my space and honor myself. And if my body tells me I want to eat some hot dogs, I'm going to eat some fucking hot dogs. Excuse me. But that's nobody's business. That's my sovereignty. And that's me working out my way, my yellow brick road with the universe. You know, everybody mind your own shift. I don't even have time to, to worry about that. You know, and I'm speaking in the third person, but I'm just saying, I get what you're saying. Uh, at the same time, we wake up the next morning and it's a brand new day and it's a brand new day and and uh and 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 everything has changed and and this goes this goes to a, a higher or deeper uh line of questioning although maybe it's less frequently that comes in from our i don't know if you want to call it motivator agitator uh you know, whatever you want to call it. So the question to you then, I understand where you're at. And then you wake up and you say, which is remarkable, because the, 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 the profoundness is in the question. How, I'm Dr. Joe, how in the hell, after all this way, do I wake up and this be the most difficult time in 27 years since I quit drinking? If you're getting prodded like that, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, any of us, if you're getting prodded and questioning after elevating and expanding and, and, and overcoming and the challenges and the traumas and the obstacles and the stories that we've all gone through, you're doing something right. Yeah. You're doing something right. You're expanding the universe by continuing to expand yourself instead of this Lottie fucking da, we're here. Uh, I am nothing, and I get that, and I am everything, and I get that, but but almost to the point that our life is insignificant. Maybe suffering is okay. People use that word, suffering. Maybe it's okay. Maybe it's the chaos, discontent, into the lull before the shift. Maybe you can't get there. Who wants to be an EKG that's going, eh, instead of boop, 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 boop? Will you notice? It's up and down, up and down. And, and is that not, is not everything in the universe, you know, made in the image? Is that not indicative of how this works? The universe is in a straight line like that. We all know that. So I commend you to have that kind of questioning in your head is one thing. To address it is another and to share it publicly is, is even more powerful because it's that vulnerable, raw, real expression of uh, expression from the throat chakra that includes the integration of the physical and the non-physical the human is the hero and uh and it's not <laughs> it's not always warm and fuzzy but before the, the warm and fuzzy before the shift comes is that is that what you described with your with your comment about toughest time in 27 years so on a personal level, can you, can you say, or can you explain or expand on why has this been the toughest period you've had in 27 years, 27 years since you quit drinking? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, as I say, when I wake up every morning, I just surrender again, you know, and I get a sense of, yes, we're here. And this is this energy that's been surrounding me for a long time. And sometimes I get a feeling that it's really cloaking me. <laughs> and that always gives me ego a bit of sort of intimidation because I think, oh, shit, what's on the way, you know. And then I go in. I work in a very busy place where there's hundreds and hundreds of people milling around all the time. And when I walked in, I got the old feeling again of paranoia, like I was being attacked, you know. And as part of one of my diagnoses, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia, you know, and it was it was back again. It was all almost like... There was multiple personalities just bombarding me. But there was this one part of me that was very, very calm in the middle of it. Now, I never had that before, Todd, because I was living on fear. I didn't have that discernment and the ability to stay calm 
See, I'm, I've almost got a, one of those going on now to stay calm right in the middle of it, you know. And I feel now that my energies, you know, it's almost coming there and I can stay focused and just focus on get through this, you know. It's almost like an asteroid belt coming at me, but I can sit in the driving seat and actually drive my way through all this shit that's coming at me, you know. Now, the old Joe, I would have been so frightened, I would have to run away, and then I'd feel so ashamed and not being able to be a man that I'd have to go and have a drink then, and then all it would. But what I've realized is now is I don't emotionally engage with the fear anymore, you yeah. know, and that, that's the big thing because when you emotionally engage to defend yourself, you go into what's called an egocentric contraction, yeah. and that's all everything then is a defense mechanism. So really, I had to sort of keep open because I could feel it trying to close in. But I breathed my way through it because I've been shown all sorts of breathing techniques. And I was able to focus, to use my throat, to breathe in a certain way and almost like follow a line through it, really. You know, but that was I've had that all week, really. And it only really started to leave me yesterday and then people were saying I, mean, I talked to Shanine quite a lot and she was saying that she felt if, if she doesn't mind me saying she felt that it was a lot lighter and it was a more gentle energy that came in and I, I felt that at the same time there was much more flowing and less intense energy and, and as for the predictions of you know events and stuff like that I, I saw that out of the deep dark night a light came out and it was almost like it, it came across the whole globe from space and it just swept across the whole planet. So I've seen that very, very clearly. And I asked, is there going to be one single event? And I get, yes, it will be, depending on what the, pers the person's level of development is, because people are waking up individually every single day right across the planet. So the event's there for them. It's almost like Saul, who became Paul on the road to Damascus, you know, he saw the light. And I think many, many, many people are seeing the light because their third eye's being switched on, because temporarily they're being helped to a, a position of stillness where the light goes on. And, and part of the I am technique that I, I teach and I'm not trying to flog it it's just that what I've learned myself is that there's a special breathing technique that you can use I've done it with you is put your hand on your heart breathe it around about six breaths per minute and temporarily there's almost like the still point comes in and then you get this download comes in and the light goes on you know and I see it's my sort of job is to help people to touch that and then to say to them off you go then because you'll be guided if you keep in the right vibration, you know. So, you know, there's all different techniques that I use depending on how I feel. And something else that's happening to me is I feel like I'm being guided as well. This energy is working its way throughout my whole body and through my cells, you know. And I feel that sometimes it's pointing me to work on your left hip and your left leg, do some stretching there. And it's almost like a diner rod goes through and it's sort of decluttering all sorts of obstructed places in me. And when I do the stretching, and, and what this is, is it's the light body now that's actually starting to shine through my physical body. Can you tell how spiritual I am by look? Can you see the shine on me? It's good yeah. No, but this is yeah. what I feel. I feel the sort of the inner radiance is yeah. starting to make its way through now. And I think what I had for a long time was I had a knowledge of what it was all about. And I thought I'd received enlightenment. And, but then the next phase is when it starts to actually work through you and starts to change your physical body, you yeah. know, by changing the way your DNA vibrates and stuff. So I understand this at a deep level. And from a biochemical point of view, I understand how DNA now can be changed by removing the filters that have obstructed it from fully expressing itself you know so there's loads and loads of information coming through and i'm also starting to get the technical words now like yeah. photons and phonons and yeah, protons. so you're better than me <laughs> I, you know, like all that. What, I like what you said though about the uh the uh um uh, upgrading or alignment or uh whatever whatever in regard to DNA, the DNA uh, contained within the creator. Okay, so that means that, you know, uh, one guy eats a hot dogs and the other one is a straight vegan or one is a, a straight sexual preference and one is a bisexual or one is a, this color and one's that color. 
the creator, which is you or me, uh, contains within them all that DNA that can be commanded, rebranded, expanded, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Uh, and, and I want to say this too, it, uh, you know, it is an overcomplication. The, the ego, honestly, I'm going to use that word, the, the, the soul, this guidance, uh, whatever it is comprised of, the multidimensional aspects, higher self, God, source, goddess, whatever, doesn't need explanation. No. It doesn't need rationalization. So, so it's not too hard to figure out what voice we are allowing to direct us by our own uh, choice of free will. And so having said that, you know, as we were talking last night, uh, we were talking about, because it's the same thing, what happens in here is what's happening out here. So if, if a person is trying to con construct in the old manner, create in the old manner of control, uh, you know, outlining, framing it up, uh, the old 3D paradigm, and regardless of gender, the masculine paradigm that we've known which is the planning and the strategies and you got to do this and you got to do that and let's charge the hill uh it brings stress yeah. it brings stress so whatever it is and however you describe it or i would describe it or, or 10 other people would describe it maybe it all sounds different one thing you can know is is there's a peace and there's a calmness God, that was good. That, that looks really calm. In fact, it's so calm, you've frozen. You're like the epitome of calmness. So you don't need to explain it, Todd, because once you've felt it, then you know. There we are. You, you froze. Yeah, you froze yeah. a bit. Yeah. Where did I drop off? About a minute ago. <laughs> you well, said it's all about well, calm and then you froze it was like well no it well, yeah i wasn't saying it's all about calm what i'm saying is is that regardless of whatever method you or i advocate to ourselves or to anyone else uh you can pretty much tell if it's working for you yeah. which is the only thing that really matters yeah. is if you are not living a stressful over analytical uh, self-conscious which and all that stuff that it leads to type of life moment by moment uh, we can say all we want but how do you feel yeah. that's that to me is is like the uh, I don't want to say the key to the car in the ascension for me but how do you feel how do you feel you know how do you feel in this moment so if you feel like uh, z -z 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 -z, these people, this, you need to do that. I need to do this. I need to do that. Then, hey, you might want to go back to the recipe and see what, because remember, you wake up every day and it's a totally new game. What you did yesterday and maybe the, the you may have been operating the hundredth percentile of efficiency in the ascension, but you wake up today and that, that uh, recipe is about 70, the 70th percentile. This is the universe. This is the universe. You wake up in the morning, that black dragon's there, the holy mother's there, the holy darkness is there and says, hey, guess what? There's a new dream catcher today. Oh, well, I used this one in the last one and I maxed it out. Well, you want to try that? That's fine. But you're just as good jumping in with a blank mind because <laughs> that's pretty much how it works. Well, no, totally, mate. And, you know, it's sort of exciting and exhilarating as well. When you're going with the flow, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but I can sort of feel. It's almost like I can feel the thinking and the analysis trying to get in, and I just breathe it away now. I often use these sort of analogies, you know, like a cow when flies fly I fly onto the cow, and the tail just does that every now and then in a very relaxed way. That's the way I feel it really. That the yeah. stuff lands on me, and I just breathe it away now with a stroke or with a breath just to stay centered and grounded. Yeah. But as I say, this week, it was difficult. It was very difficult, but I sort of knew 
that I was okay. And what I've got is, Todd, I've got maybe three or four people who I can share absolutely every detail about how I'm feeling and yeah. my behavior with them. And they're not there to re they're not there to advise me or guide me. They're just there to listen. Because yeah. in the end, my view is if you don't come up with your own solution and you're giving your power away and you're really under control of somebody else then. So the, again, I think that you have to express all this obstruction until it's freed. And at the end, the message will be there and it might say, just turn left. Yeah. So far, you know, and then all Or it might say it, it might say put your fucking seatbelt on, stupid, because yeah, we're yeah. about to go down. <laughs> no, it but it might do. It might do, but, no, but that's what I'm saying is until you it's like ticker tape, as I say, you've got to do that. Disentangle, that. Un unravel it, and then look at yeah. the red bit at the end that says turn left and have coffee, not it. tea. I love that. It's like I get this uh metaphoric image when you're saying that, you know, about the turn left. And so, like, you know, we're driving in the vehicle of Ascension, right? And we're like, oh, my God, there's an intersection coming. There's an intersection coming. This is a new dimension. They don't have red, yellow, and green lights. They're not driving on the left side of the road. They're not driving on the right side of the road. You know, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> and, and that constriction, which we all know now, affects your muscles, your nervous system, every part of your physiology and your spiritology. And then... Here we are, you know, white knuckling it, and we pull up to the intersection. You just hear, turn left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It, probably says, yeah. it probably says, turn left, knobhead. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so that's that's what I've done. I've I've practiced now, you know, twenty seven years. I've practiced using these tools, and the tools basically are surrender, yeah. right? go deeper because you you say the same as me i feel the deeper you go the higher you get you know and i know that there's no levels but in a 3d world we have to express ourselves or i have to with left and right black and white you know up and down there's a relativity and that's the world that we live in in 3d and also i've seen as well as it's a materialistic world it's capitalistic yeah. it has completely and utterly different rules and regulations than the spirit dimensions have as well and every time you get to a different level of spirituality the, the laws of physics change as well that's right see. that's right the math changes it, it the does. math changes and it's changing rapidly so so you know i've been seeing like uh, how would i explain it so uh, so you might see okay let me tell you they're like a triangle you see a tri I see I would see a triangle and then I would see kind of like flower of life then I would see a tr two triangles come out of it or three or four right and then from there it, it just each one of them does the same thing and it just but these triangles these triangles were three-dimensional or more right so they had the depth you know in the shadow between the lines and the you know what I mean yeah. and, the, and the altitude and the and the width and, and they were just like, and I was seeing it as how our energy is, well, it's always affected things that way, but it was kind of like stilted or stagnated because of our level of perception and awareness, at least in what was dominant. So in other words, to put it in layman's terms or another way, is we were hitting our head on the ceiling. Uh, we were actually creating everything. You can say we were duped. You can say there was interference. You can say we planned it all, whatever you want to say. But this was happening. And then the lid came off. The veil came off. And so now you have this conscious creativity thing going. And, and, and the math is, is beyond exponential. It's, it's like, it's just like, beyond it it's like a, a sparkler you know those sparklers you get for the fireworks and the you know and everything is going every direction right it's not just going this way or that way or this way or that way or up or down it's going every direction and and that's what i'm seeing and this is so powerful because what's happening is their heart-based intentions uh heart-based desire to grow which is really which is really the the uh the fertility of of what we're doing like if you have the desire even you know, if you didn't know what the hell's going on if you have the desire to grow the desire to expand the desire to be 
more in love, whatever the case is, it's going to meet you there. And and now the uh, the repercussions, the consequences, the effects of that are beyond exponential. And the real the real wild card in all of it is this collaboration and co-creation. This is what's mind blowing. The question is, how do we get from here to there? And 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 I keep, I get, I'm not saying it's gospel. I get that if it's been done, whatever's been done before, won't work now. That's that new math you're talking about, you know. So it, you know, I get a lot of people hit, hitting us up about, you know, this this quote unquote business, uh, uh, you know, a proposal or plan or whatever. And if and, and I'm starting to understand because I did it. You try to frame it up, you try to hold it, you try to box it, you know what I mean? And it's just not going to work. So that means more of that surrender you're talking about, letting go, the breathing, metaphorically, figuratively, literally, and allowing, and allowing. And that is not something any of us have done. You know, this is a new, this is a new template we're building and, and it's, an, it's a wildly explosive template because of the fact that it involves physical matter yeah. and our non-physical aspects, aspect, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, but I love what you, your delivery because, because it all goes through the human. Because I'm Dr. Joe. Oh, this is the toughest time I've had in 27 years. I've done a lot of research. I'm very well read. I've gone, gone to school. I've got my PhD. I do my, you know, I, I do this, the body, mind, soul thing on myself. And I'm still waking up every day to a new math. And I'm not afraid to tell you. And I think that's the frequency that actually activates people more than anything, souls more than anything, regardless of what we're getting from upstairs. You know, it's that human saying, oh, my God, oh, shit, this morning. <laughs> oh, shit, you know. And I think the sense I get is is to help people to become more and more grounded in Mother Earth, to really open up that root, feel it in this way, <sighs> and feel that and not be afraid of that now because that's part of that dynamic clearing. It's like, it's it's hard to explain, but you, I know you'll understand. It's like a really, really fierce gentleness you know and todd you know yeah it's 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 almost like it's it's like a laser you know it's like amplified light and the finer it gets the more it can cut through yeah yeah the more it can actually cut through so so this thing here is the red the black and the red energy and it this to me means the root chakra combined with the sacral chakra and there's very very um, ancient martial arts techniques that combine the father god the mother earth and they mix in the heart if you like like a cauldron and that's where all these impurities are burnt off you know and we've talked before about the sacred child then being born you know and i think what's happening is that people who are in this place that we're at at this vibration now it's almost like the sacred child is a rekindling and a reconnection of their true essential selves you know and 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 i am becoming you know i just feel like a little kid most of the time because people say to me all my life you know be serious and todd you know i mean I, when i come on here and i see myself talking on the television here i think christ you look serious son you know but there's a part of me that's chuckling you know, and, and considering the shit that I went through in the week, talking to you now and, and talking about this stuff, I feel really strong. I feel like I'm in exactly the right place. And I don't know whether I'm particularly looking forward to tomorrow, but, you know, there's a sort of sense of I wonder what's going to happen tomorrow because because potentially in my material life, everything's falling apart. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, but you know what? That's 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 prevalent out there. Yeah. It's been it's been out there for a while, and uh, and I think that is the dragon. That is the dragon energy. The dragon energy's coming in, and well, you said at the top of the show, the universe. You put it somehow that the universe is removing that which doesn't serve you. Yeah. So, and kind of like if you ain't gonna do it, I'm gonna do it for you. 
kind of thing. That's that dragon. That's that Cali energy. Another thing that uh, Hung Nguyen brought up yesterday, beautiful sister. Man. Uh, so I, we were talking about the dragons and the dragon energy. And she was explaining that, that from her understanding that they're beyond gender, that they have all these different attributes, but that if you kind of like generally uh, kind of make a, a statement in general, there's two, uh, not primary, but two, uh, well, maybe two primary um, characteristics. One is a very nurturing Absolutely. spirit, you know, which we would, we would uh, equate to feminine, right? The other one is, hey, get off your ass, get off the pity pot, it's time to go to work, all right? And so that's that's that black and red to me. That's that's that you know it's a come to Jesus meeting, as they 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 say in the South, uh, you know, organized religious Western world. But it's 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 a, yeah, it's time to uh, step out and belly up to the bar, as we might say in the old days, uh, you know. And uh, and that's what that is. But I think I think where our where our journey of discovery, awareness, self-love, self-worth has come or is soon coming is that we are so, we have, we have raised the bar of love so far, and we all know that starts with ourselves, that we are realizing we're the fucking dragon. <laughs> we're the nurturer. We're the one with that huge mother goddess heart, but we're also that other uh, ask the other uh, side of the spectrum of the dragon and that is hey you know it's time to shit or get off the pot let's roll with this because because in essence there's no time yeah. but the clock is ticking so this exactly. is like our moment in the sun our moment to expand the universe and it may have taken 10 million fucking years to get here for a period that's only going to be on a linear scale of say even a thousand years but this is the deal this is the climax. This is the soul gasm. This is our shot. And then it goes back to what you said earlier, back to the four seasons, back to the cyclical nature of the perfect order, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, and it, it, it helps me talking to you too, Joe, you know? No, no, it's, it's great, mate, because, you know, it's a feeling, as you say, it's a, it's the same vibration. We're on the same wavelength and they're good vibrations, but you know, I think to help people or through my experiences, one of the first things to start to learn to love yourself is to not take any shit anymore, right? Yeah. It's to say no, because I was brought up to try and please everybody. And I lost myself a long, long time ago along the way, you know. And when you start to care for yourself, not, not in a selfish way, but when you start to say no and you bring your energy back, right, you know, what actually happens is people start to call you selfish because you're not running around for them anymore and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's 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 almost like to grab everything back, give yourself some time to sit with yourself and say to your heart, just a request. Please show me who I am. Yeah. Please show me my purpose. If there is such a thing. I don't know anything really. In fact, I've been fooling myself for such a long time. I'm just going to ask you, Hart, because other people are doing this and it seems to be working. Will you give me an effing clue about what it's all about? And that's where I think the magic, if you can get to the point where you're willing to say that and almost surrender to the fact that there's something more intelligent than your ego, yeah. and, you know, and I mean ego in the sense of an obstructed person. You know, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Then, then magic starts to happen, true, true magic. And then people start to feel the Kundalini moving. Some people even go into spontaneous Qigong or Tai Chi or whatever, you, you know, they start to move and be moved by the spirit. And I think once you start to feel that you're being moved from deep within, bottom up and inside out, then it's got you in a positive way, but it'll frighten the shit out of you for a while until you learn, let go, let yeah. God and see what happens next, you know? Yeah, that's very true. And I, and I love those two points, um, ask and, and it, well, if you have the desire, you know, you're going to ask, you know, you're going to get that point of surrender. That's why we do it so many times. That's why we get on our knees so many times. Cause we're like, okay, 
I'm busting my ass here. I'm doing the best I can. I'm a little bit confused. It's complicated. Whatever the case is, please. Yeah. And, and it, and it, it you're, it's reciprocated. Yeah. I don't want to uh, get out uh, before uh, talking about one other thing, recognizing you. So uh, I saw the other day that you're doing a, like a weekly show that sometimes you'll have guests and such. And I just want to say that's, I, I, th- I think that's fantastic. Um, told you would support that vibration uh all day long every day i see a lot of people stepping up and i think the more people that step up and de-emphasize the the matrix uh metric of how many people are watching how many engagements that i have how many comments that i have and really just put it out there uh, whether there's one person or a million people watching that, that is a, that's what we need to see because something happens when you go live versus replay uh, and not that replays. Uh, I mean, you know, recording and uploading is not, a, is not valuable. All right. It is, but there's something about being live and raw uh, and sharing that frequency with, you know, with the world, with your brothers and sisters, that reaches people and it doesn't even matter what the topic is it just matters what the souls how how clearly the souls coming through or the soul the voices of the human the soul the spirit the higher all the aspects how much alignment there is in that frequency which really all comes down in my opinion to how uh um how much god it's really a dual word but like how much allowance and how much command uh how much of a surrender and how much of an embrace that human part of us has uh, and and i think that's that's what you do and uh and i and i, I just want to recognize you for that and also say i wish you the best with it and help you any way that i can and uh anything else you got to close out with no thanks mate i mean my biggest problem in the 3d world is that i've still got the job to keep up and i've still got to do that to get the money to keep going you know and yeah. it would be lovely to be able to dispense with that and but once again as morgan says you know patience you know have faith yeah. give time time you know and it, it's all being and, and i get this clearly it's all being sorted in the in the invisible dimensions and it would all fall into place exactly at the right time and that's why i have to keep you know when my head comes in and gets a bit fearful about the future and stuff like that i have to say thy will not mine be done you know and it's held me in good stead todd for 27 years if it keeps carrying on without you know don't don't fix it if it's not broken I'm yeah. just going to carry on doing what I'm doing. And I'm sure that this feeling will become stronger and stronger and stronger. And and the other thing is, I'm not going out to purposely help anybody else. This is the thing, you know, I used to be like an ambulance chaser, you know, oh, he needs my help. She does. I'll touch her and she'll be healed and all that bollocks, you know. All I'm trying to do now more and more is to let go, to be more free, because yeah. I think I think it's in that process when everybody just lets go and becomes themselves again, yeah. that's when all these all these triangles and pyramids and spheres and ellipses, that's when this dodecahedral twelves will all link together and it will light up this crystalline grid across the planet. So I think we individually have to let go in order to be lit up. And then this inner radiance then links with the Earth's grid, and we know this, and then it links to this macrocosmic orbit then and everything just falls into place you know so i can see that happening and you know i just urge people let go i say god because it's quicker than saying spirits of the universe and all that let go let god one gentle breath at a time and see how you get on with that yeah i dig that man i dig that totally do your best and the universe will do the rest (laughs) absolutely absolutely So uh, when's your, when's your, uh, have you done a show yet on that announcement that you made? No, no. What it is, is I go out and sometimes um, take some of my students who go and, you know, treat people and stuff like that, you know, mm-hmm. and if we get an opportunity, it gets recorded and we do stuff. But Good. What, what, I'm, what I'm hoping to do is a, a bit like you're doing here and what Shanine does and all that sort of thing is maybe every now and then put a Zoom link up because I've got a professional Zoom thing that I don't use often, 
So maybe just say, I'm here if anyone wants a quick chat. And if there's all sorts of people knocking about, just go with the flow, mate. No plan. The word I like is, and I've used it before, is live extemporaneously. And what that means is when I go, when I looked it up in the dictionary, live without a script. Just yeah. go and do yeah, what that's, you That's it. That's it right there. That's it right yeah. there. You know? And I think that's what alcohol does. Alcohol and drugs. It's a chemical way to disinhibit and dis, you know, and to remove your head chemically so that you have this feeling of spontaneity. But unfortunately, it's chemically induced. So you can do it by just being yourself and it comes naturally, you know, doing what right. comes naturally to you. Right on. Right on. All right, Dr. Joe, when are we going to meet your uh, better half? Yeah, I'm trying to get it on. I'm going to drag it on one of these days because she's she's so sensitive and, you know, she doesn't do people, but she does plants and she does animals and stuff like that because the energy of people knocks it off balance. I'll try and persuade her. I'll get a big stick and drag it in one of these days. <laughs> Good luck with that. Well, well, if you do, cut, well, regardless of whether she shows up or not, we'll know you're going to show up with a couple of black eyes and a bump on your head. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. You no doubt. Like, like, yeah, you look because, like a cyclops. <laughs> yeah, she, she's got double dragons, you know, so, you know. That's <laughs> yeah. All right, mate. So God All bless right. you and um, see you soon. And my okay. love to Morgan. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Toodle pip. Toodle pip.